Hey everybody, this is Perch, and uh, you may have noticed it's been a little bit since I've done some of the numbers videos. I have some work coming up. I've, I've, <laughs> one day I'll be able to explain kind of the production of these videos in a coherent way that uh, will make sense to people and, and probably help. Uh, but I, uh, the, the numbers videos, I, I want to thank a couple people. I know uh, just some guy did a video where he kind of showed those numbers. I, I, I've offered this before, but certainly if anybody wants to take some of those charts and high res, I've got them. Just shoot me an email. I'll be happy to give you whatever you like. I've got some of these uh, these charts nicely uh, all painted up and, and perfect for YouTube if you want to look at it. But there's a couple overall conclusions, and I've, I've talked about this before in videos, but uh, as I get more and more and more of these videos up, I think the consistency of the picture becomes the most interesting part. Um, already, because this, this point is really obvious, and, and it was actually made in one, the Captain Marvel relaunch video just just painted the picture far better than anyone else could. Um, its relaunches cause sales to spike with new number ones, but rapidly the sales drop back to where they were and then some. You atrophy each time. And we've talked about this. I mean, lots of people have talked about this. There are big, big arguments online about this. You know, people are like, well, that's not always true, but it's true 95% of the time. That's what happens. And, and so this is one of the things you can kind of draw from this video. Now you can say to yourself, well, then why, you know, if it's so obvious, why do the comic companies keep doing this? Well, because they're in the short term business in many cases. And that's weird to say for comics, which last forever. But the thinking is short term. The thinking is I just got to get through this month and then I just got to get through the next month and then I just have to get through the next month. And that's all that that's really how a lot of the business gets planned, particularly at the editorial level. Um, it's it's very much a nearsighted game. And as such, you know, things like, hey, let's spike the sales this month. You're looking at your titles as a portfolio, not as an ongoing thing. Yeah, yeah, that's that's the easier, quicker, faster way to do it. It works out. And besides that, people tend to leave. Um, the, the more complicated picture, but these numbers start to draw it out as well, is is kind of the um, what I would call the futility of a lot of anger and outrage. What, what do I mean by that? Well, uh, again, a couple other people have made some videos recently. I was talking to a friend about this, which is the the weird place you get your head in, which is this person, let's say this creator, is really obnoxious on social media. They're, they're, they're saying terrible things and they're just, they're blocking people and man, it's just it's so obnoxious this person. And you can almost wait because 90% of the time, and it is that high, this person has a five-year career arc. That's about it. It's it's short. The trajectory of their career, uh, you know, they they come up, they become the flavor of the day, they get a bunch of titles, uh, usually based on things that have nothing to do with the writing. Now, I, I'll go. Some people will assign that to, you know, various uh, you know gender or race kind of issues, but it's more than that. It's there's there's a number of different factors that might get you into that state. Colin Bunn was a really big deal uh, for for five years, for a very short time. Um, and it's not like these people go away and disappear. It's just all the hype and the buzz wears off, and then the person goes back to working their way up the indies. It's 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 very artificial kind of method. And it's something that's really, I mean, you can almost trace it back to kind of the late 90s, uh, maybe mid 90s. And it's, it's why the story of people like Stephen Platt and others are interesting, because it is this idea of this, this arc of this person who comes in gets a massive amount of hype, gets built up, does a little bit, and then, you know, a, for a variety of factors, drops back off. It doesn't last long. The people who last long, the uh, whether, you know, from, and, and it, it, this is across a spectrum of writers and artists and other things, they tend to have a very long career of slowly working their way up. And I, I think uh, you people have referenced Mark Millar's uh, tweet or uh, thread where he talks about uh, being poor and working his way up. A couple of people have done some videos, chatted with a friend about that as well. And it's it's uh, there's not an excuse for hard work. There's a lot of shortcuts for hard work, but the shortcuts are temporary. It's like junk food. It doesn't last. It doesn't build muscle or mass. It doesn't do anything for you. It just is a, a short term burst. And in a lot of cases, those bursts are unhealthy. If you point to other fields, if you point to, say, uh, the engineering field, um, in this case, the tech engineering field, this is an area that managers worry about because you'll get these new superstars that know maybe one particular language or one particular bit of code that's really exciting. 
And it's very tempting in the startup world or the, uh, the arms race of getting great developers to instantly promote that person to like a director or a VP. The problem is time and experience and more than that, hard work, you know, over that time uh, builds a lot of muscle memory. It builds a lot of, of kind of understanding how things work that can't be shortcutted. It's why you see, um, you know, why did Mark Millar make it and get the comic books and the movie deal that a lot of people covet and actually make it successful? Well, because he spent 30 years in the business. The same thing is true of a lot of people. I mean, as much as, as people want to complain about Bendis, Bendis is at his position because he put in decades of work. And he certainly used his influence and his name to help people move faster uh, in his kind of in his umbrella, in his circle. But in many cases, he may have done them as much of a disservice as a service because they didn't learn the same skills he himself learned in growing and, and being part of that position. And so these numbers videos do an interesting thing where as much as it's tempting sometimes to, to yell and scream about people, the numbers tends to be the final arbiter of this stuff. It tends to be the reality check that no, uh, no angry video, no angry tweet, no, no blog entry, nothing can do. Uh, if you have the talent and the hard work and the effort and you put in, you build your career up, you'll do well. Brett Booth has had a career in comics uh, for now three decades. Uh, probably he's, he's, he's been in comics forever. And what you'll notice from the interview I did with him and when he's talked to other places, he puts in the work. He works hard. He puts a lot of detail onto the page and he still draws in the traditional way. And it's, uh, he's, he's, a, he's an incredible talent as a result. Um, but he didn't take shortcuts to get there. And so it, it, over time, time has a way of evening all these things out. He gets a job one place, he gets a job another place. Some people say, I, I don't like him on X-Men, he gets a job doing something else. Brett Booth has a sustainable long career, that's fine. But it's built on hard work. And the numbers will show that the creators, writers and artists, and, and even publishers with their titles, if you put in the investment, then it typically pays off. It's one of the reasons why, you know, I, the, the indies are struggling to get some stuff on the board. You'll see... Again, like junk food, you'll see a, maybe a big name creator go to Boom or go to Image, get a comic up, gets the numbers spiked real high, but it doesn't last. The numbers tend to fall very, very quickly. The order numbers for crossover have fallen significantly from issue one. There's a lot of stock still on the shelf. Now, did Donny Cates suddenly become a worse writer between issue number one and number six? No, of course not. But they were leveraging his name. They were leveraging the fact that Donny Cates is hot because of his work at, at Marvel. And people overordered, and the, the base wasn't there. And this comic doesn't survive over time. There's a lot of lessons about the comic business and, and how comics work and what sells and what doesn't and the trajectory of things that are, that are not that mysterious. In many cases, you just pause, unplug from social media, look at basic business books or basic uh, projections, basic uh, curves. Um, all this stuff, when I say basic curves, I'm not, I'm not talking about J. Scott Campbell's uh, art, although that's nice too. It's funny because I'm looking over at my little studio desk and sure enough, uh, what's there is that, uh, that cover that everybody's all pissed off about. <laughs> you know, right there, framed, signed, go figure. Anyway, uh, the, the, rate, the trend line, the trend curve is what I'm referring to. All this stuff, we, the answers are already there. In many cases, the most maddening part for me about comics is how unsurprising this stuff is it's it's not it's not a it's not magic it's in many cases it's very basic business that is going on it's 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 very traditional models that we've seen a million times before why is that why is it somehow new and surprise why are we trying to reinvent the wheel why are we taking these things that i mean one of the sadder parts about comics bluntly is that if it was more important, if there was more money to be gained, if there was more attention in it, if there was more uh, focus and love in comics, then smart people would have come in and stopped a lot of these practices some time ago. The reason they're continuing is because it is so small, because it is so niche. Now, any competent, I mean, Disney themselves coming in doing a very careful examination of the business would have stopped these relaunches and the incentive programs and everything else because they're predatory to themselves. The numbers all show it, but comics is small. It's run oftentimes like a boutique. 
And in many cases, it's run, and I'm not talking about the creators, I'm talking about the people higher up. It's run by people who are used to kind of running a cottage business. I, you know, the interview with Jim Salakrup, if you haven't listened to that, check that out. What you hear are a lot of, in between a lot of great stories and great memories, you hear a lot of good business fundamentals. And you see that now he's over and he's working uh, with punch cuts, doing the asterisks, uh, you know, bringing that into the U.S. And they're talking about, he's talking business, he's talking millions of units, he's talking actual, you know, growth, no shortcuts. And it works. I, I mean, th these things, again, these things are not new. And so if you're a new aspiring creator, if you maybe are working for a, a small publisher, you should have a great optimism because the reality the business is still in this place where you could, you could with hard work, dedication, yes, a little bit of luck, but definitely the hard work and the dedication and just hiring your, and surrounding yourself with smart people and not sycophants, you can have a major comic publishing company. Even if you're starting from close to nowhere today, you just got to, you know, you, you've got to turn off the silliness, the bravado, the gimmicks, the games, the, uh, the, the junk that, that it may be fun and, and amusing and, and make you laugh to engage in, but does not build a sustainable business and, and just focus on basic fundamentals. It, it's, it's right there for you. These numbers are fascinating. Yes, more are coming. And uh, but they will continue to paint the same picture and, and they're fun to work. And I do want to say a big thank you to all the people who promoted them recently. Certainly sent some people to the channel. It's very appreciated. Uh, thank you. Uh, you. You guys have, have uh, I really appreciate all the all the, the nice nods to sometimes my dry and boring and, um, you know, silly information. <laughs> Thanks for listening.